Hey, I'm Colby. Welcome to Starlink Hardware. We've got an interesting video for you today. We're going to have a race. We're going to have a competition between all of the Starlink dishes you see behind me. I have everything from the Gen 1 standard circular dish, Gen 2 standard actuated, the Generation 2 high performance, and then finally the newest dish, the Gen 3 standard. So we're going to take all of these dishes and put them head to head in a download and upload speed competition. Each dish is going to be powered on by itself out in the middle of my yard here. Completely unobstructed view. I've already verified that in advance. So only one dish running at a time. I'm going to start with the Gen 1 circular and just work up based on the release date all the way to the Gen 3 standard. Every dish is on the same service plan. It's on the priority, the highest data type that you can get. And I did that to make sure that the service plan wasn't a limiting factor here. After all, I'm trying to test the hardware, see which hardware version is the best. So every dish is on the same service plan. I'm using the built-in app speed test, specifically the advanced speed test router to internet score to judge between the dishes. So I'm completely eliminating the Wi-Fi variable. So Wi-Fi signal strength is not a consideration here. So how the test will work, how the competition will work, I'll give each dish three tests, three advanced speed test runs, and I'll take the best download speed and the best upload speed from those three tests as the final score. So before we get started with the testing, why don't we meet all the competition here? Let's start with this uh, Gen 1 circular dish. So if you're not aware, this is the OG dish, the original. Uh, the official nickname for it was Dishy McFlatface. It is an actuated dish. It's pretty massive, pretty heavy. Comes with this Wi-Fi 5 router, um, separate power brick, uh, came with the standard RJ45 connectors and everything like that. So this is the OG, the original, the oldest one. Uh, it was produced late 2020 into early 2021 before it was replaced by this one, which is the Gen 2 standard actuated. So the Gen 2 standard actuated took the place of the Gen 1 circular dish. This one had the proprietary connectors. It had the integrated power supply into the router, uh, the weird cables. This one was also motorized. Moving on here, part of the, I consider it at least part of the generation two anyway, this was the high performance. So there are two versions of the high performance. One of them is this one, just called high performance. This one has the motors and the mast. There's an identical one, uh, identical antenna at least, without the motors and mast that's called the flat high performance. I'm not going to be testing the flat high performance as a part of this test because this is the same exact antenna as what's on the flat high performance. So this will represent the entire high performance family. Uh, this one just came with the standard Gen 2 router. So this is Wi-Fi 5 technology. I don't think I mentioned it before on the standard actuated. This is the most expensive dish at $2,500. This is what you got for uh, business customers and maritime customers before the flat high performance existed. And then finally, the newest member of the Starlink family here, this is the Gen 3 standard. So this one, besides the flat high performance, was the first dish to come without the motors and the mast. So this is a manually aligning dish. Comes with the best router that Starlink has released so far, the Gen 3 router. Um, they went back to standard RJ45 cables, ethernet ports on the router, and a bunch of other improvements. It's gotten a lot of criticism though because of the manual aiming and the fact that it just kind of feels cheaper, a little bit cheaper. So that's the competition. It'll be kind of interesting to see, has the Gen 3 improved? Do you get faster speeds with the newer dish or can you get still great speeds with the original one? We're gonna find out. Okay, let's get started with uh, the first one, Gen 1 standard circular dish, AKA Dishy McFlatface. We are setting up uh, the first competitor here. This is the Gen 1 circular dish. Let's see how it performs. I'm here with the Gen 1 circular dish, AKA Dishy McFlatface. Dishy, you are the oldest competitor in our field today. You're facing a lot of newer competition, a lot of newer technology. How do you respond to criticism that you should just go ahead and hang up the hat and retire on a high note? All right, you heard it folks. Good luck out there, Dishy. Okay, so we've got the first contestant up and running. Uh, it's been booting up and calibrating and everything for the past like 20 or 30 minutes. So I think we're ready for the speed test. Um, I'm gonna go into the speed test in the Starlink app, go into the advanced portion and uh, 
record the results for you. I'll show you everything on the camera and we'll do three tests and the top result for each from each test will be the final score for the Gen 1 circular dish. So let's go ahead and start the advanced speed test here. First result here, test number one, Gen 1 circular. We have 78 megabits per second down and it looks like 28 megabits per second up. Let's go ahead and wait a couple minutes and then run another test. Second test is just now finishing up here. We have 84 megabits per second down and 14.1 megabits per second up. Uh, let's see if we can do any better on that third test here. These are kind of lower uh, results than I was uh, hoping for, expecting. So let's see if the final test uh, shows any improvement. So uh, I don't know what to say here. Pretty consistent at least. We have for the final number three test for the Gen 1 circular dish, we have 85 down and it looks like 16.8 up. Final results for the Gen 1 circular dish. We had a top download speed of 85 megabits per second and top upload speed 28 megabits per second. So a lot lower on the download than I was expecting. I'm not sure if that is due to the older hardware or maybe just a fluke. You know, I ran the, a few tests uh, several minutes apart. Um, we'll see what the other dishes can do though. All right, time for our next competitor, the Gen 2 standard actuated. I'm here with the Gen 2 standard actuated dish. Gen 2, you've been the reigning standard dish for many years now. You're the most common type of dish out there. How do you feel about the newer Gen 3 standard dish coming out? You heard it here first, folks. No motors, no problem. Gen 2 standard actuated is not worried about it at all. Good luck out there. Okay, so I'm here with the Gen 2 standard actuated and we are gonna be doing the speed testing for that dish uh, we're going to be doing three tests remember and back to back and i'm going to be showing you the advanced speed test router to internet score so first test is underway right now so first test 159 megabits per second down and 11.6 up test number two gen 2 standard actuated 259 megabits per second down and 20 megabits per second up test number three for the gen 2 standard actuated 189 megabits per second down and 14.1 megabits per second up. So final score for Gen 2 standard actuated, uh, download speed 259 megabits per second, and the highest upload speed was 20 megabits per second. So a pretty good showing for the Gen 2 standard actuated. Now let's find out what the high performance dish can do. Okay, so next up we have the high performance dish. I'm interested to see how it performs because it is the most expensive dish in our lineup. It's supposed to be the high performance. Let's see if it lives up to the name. Okay, so I'm here with the high performance dish. So high performance, you are the most expensive and premium dish in our competition. How do you respond to criticism that you have advanced technology and other features that the other dishes don't have that gives you an unfair advantage in this competition? All right, well, good luck out there. Okay, now we are testing the high performance Starlink dish. I'm using the advanced speed test and the Starlink app to report my speeds. I'm running test number one of three here and I'll show you each result. Okay, test number one, we have 181 megabytes per second down and 22 up for the high performance dish. Test number one. Second test, 233 megabytes per second down and 15.4 up for the high performance dish. Wow, okay, this one, test number three is the best yet. This is pretty impressive. Let's see if it holds. Yep, it did, okay. Let me record this real quick. So test number three is the best yet, and this is our final result, result 233 megabits per second down and 19, uh, sorry, that is, nine, yes, 19 megabits per second up. So pretty good showing for the high performance dish, although it didn't crack that 300 megabits per second mark. Okay, so we've set up our final dish of the competition, the Gen 3 standard dish, newest technology. Let's see if the newest design can have the highest speeds. Let's do it. So Gen 3 standard, you are the newest dish to the Starlink scene, and you faced a lot of criticism for not having a motors or a mast. Does that motivate you to perform better here today? 
All right, great. Thanks for taking the time and good luck out there. All right, so the Gen 3 dish has been running. It's stabilized. Let's go ahead and go into the Starlink app and do our speed test for our final competitor, the Gen 3 standard. Let's do it. So you've seen the results from the other dishes. I'll have a summary here in a minute, but can the Gen 3 dish top everybody else? It is the latest dish, the latest technology, so I would think so. You would hope so, but we'll find out here in a second. Okay, first first test, not not that great. Let's see if it can do it. I'm going to wait and give you the final result. I'm not going to spoil it for you here. We're going to give it three attempts, see if we can get the highest download and upload speeds. Okay, the second test is looking a little bit better. Will it be enough, though? Now running the final advanced speed test. This is it. This is the last opportunity. This is interesting. This is interesting. I Not what I was expecting here. Final results for the Gen 3 standard. We have a download speed, max download speed out of three attempts, 221 megabits per second down, and a 29, that's a surprising result, 29 megabits per second up. So Gen 3 standard does not win the download speed contest, but it does win the upload speed contest. So kind of an interesting result there, um, kind of surprising. Okay, so I have the results here. This is the summary of our testing. And I've got it arranged from the left of your screen to the right of your screen in order of where they came on the download speed and upload speed test. So honorable mention, in our last place, we have the original OG Dish, Dishy McFlatface, the Gen 1 Circular. Now, I think this one was a fluke. I know that that dish is capable of more speed than what it got, which was a max of 85 megabits per second down and 28 megabits per second up. I even tried off camera a few more attempts later on uh, between the other dishes and I still could not get this thing to go over 85 megabits per second. So unsure what's going on. Maybe it's a hardware issue. Maybe it's a firmware issue with the Gen 1. Who knows? But anyway, that's the nature of competition, right? It had a bad day. It's in last place. Our third place finisher, surprisingly here, is the Gen 3 standard, the newest dish, the newest technology here finishing in third place. The Gen 3 standard dish had a max download speed score of 221 megabits per second and 29 megabits per second upload. Interesting to note, it, that actually was the highest upload speed of our of the test here, but we're categorizing this based on download speeds. That's what most people think is important. So Gen 3, third place, surprising result. In second place, we have the trusty Gen 2 standard actuated. This is the most common dish. This is what most people have out there because it's been sold the longest. Gen 3 has only been out for you know a few months now in most of the world. So third place with a max download speed of 259 megabits per second and a max upload speed of 20 megabits per second, we have Gen 2 standard actuated. And finally, our winner coming in with a max download speed of 277 megabits per second, the max upload speed of 22 megabits per second, we have the high performance dish. So not really a surprise there that it claimed the top spot. This is after all supposed to be the best antenna that Starlink makes, and I think it proved itself here. Just barely edging out Gen 2 standard actuated, but a win is a win, right? So congratulations to the high performance dish. It is our winner here. It achieved the fastest download speed at 277 megabits per second. It is our winner. So let's talk about these results for a little bit. I think a lot of you will be surprised to see that the Gen 3 ended up in third place. Although it's not really surprising to me because what you have to understand, and the, really the main point of this video, the, the message that I wanted to nail home, is that speed tests are just a spot check of performance at that particular time. Okay, they're not really indicative of the overall performance capabilities of the dish, especially when it comes to Starlink internet. So all of these dishes right here are capable of super high download speeds, like above 300 megabits per second. No doubt about it, the hardware is capable. Your limiting factor is really the Starlink network itself. And even though I'm on the highest data priority with all these dishes, I'm still competing with other Starlink users in the area for bandwidth, and that can affect my download speed at any given time. So my point is that factors like time of day, the number of Starlink users in your area, your service plan, uh, the amount of obstructions that you have, your Wi-Fi signal, all these things are factors that are gonna affect your download speed and other performance metrics way more than the hardware model itself. So I just wanted to, to drive that message home that I don't think that this test result says that any di particular dish is really any better than any other dish, even though 
you know, the Fluke, the Gen 1 dish didn't even get above 100 megabits per second. I know that it's capable of more than that. And if you have a working dish right now, you know, if you're thinking, you know, Gen, hey, Gen 3 just came out, should I upgrade? Am I missing out on that newest technology? I think this test proves that the answer is no, absolutely not. Uh, if you have a working dish, whether it's a Gen 1, Gen 2 standard actuated, whatever, it's capable of the same performance. I think we proved that in the test here because the Gen 2 standard actuated actually outdid the Gen 3. I get the question all the time, should I get the high performance dish if I want the maximum speeds or should I go with the cheaper uh, standard dishes? I think the tests you know, here speak for themselves. Yes, you can get slightly higher speeds, at least in my testing on the high performance, but is it really worth six times the price for 20 more megabits per second compared to the Gen 2 standard? So I had a lot of fun making this video. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. I hope that this was interesting. Let me know your feedback in the comments below. Were you surprised by the results at all? Which dish do you have? What kind of speeds are you getting with it? So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you in the comments below.